In this video, you will get the access to challenge and chess exercises and my real-time thinking process. The best way to benefit from this training is to try to solve all the puzzles yourself. Whenever you see this sign, put the video on pause, take your time, calculate and press play once you think you've got the solution. Train your visualization following the variations I'm talking about and check if your solution was correct. I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and your improvement starts right now. E takes d5, very interesting position. So we have uh, two rooks, he has the rook and two minor pieces. At the same time, we can easily notice that both sides have problems with back ranks. So uh, if there was check, nowhere to go. And the same is for our king. So for example, if we take on b7, there is rook a1 with the checkmate. Uh, we also have very dangerous passed pawns. So the one potentially on b7, but it's not possible right now. And the one is already on d6. So... If we play something like d7 here, creating a threat of rook c8, creating a threat of rook e8, probably he has to take on d7. We play a rook e8 check, knight goes to f8. Now our rook is very active here, pinning the knight and pinning the bishop. But is it enough to win? I'm not that sure. Uh, we can take on d8 in that case, rook d8 and takes b7 for instance, creating a threat of rook c8, uh, but he simply plays rook to b8 and I think he's fine. Okay. What if we start with the rook e8 here? Rook e8, knight e8. Aha, here I can see the idea. So we can do the following, we can start with the rook c8, very nice move. Rook takes c8, then rook to e8 check, this forces knight takes e8. Then d7 with the fork, and this is basically the thread of the promotion on two squares. So d takes c8 or d takes e8. His only defense in this case is knight to d6, in which case we take on c8, knight c8 and a b7, attacking the knight and creating the thread of the promotion also on b8. Very nice. Let's do it. This is great. This is just perfect. I mean, very, very interesting useful, instructive, and really nice. And queen. Nice. So eight points plus. Let's go further. Okay, so here we have very strange material relation. So uh, we are down the rook, but we have two passed pawns. So if we play e7 here, then Rook goes to e3, if we play a7, bishop takes a7. So what do we need here is actually deflecting somebody. So bishop to c3 to start with looks very tempting to play. Just uh, with the idea of bishop takes c3 and a7. But the problem that after bishop c3, rook takes c3. So the third rank is under control. It doesn't work simply. All right. So what else? Uh, could we control e3 square? It doesn't give us anything, so let's see. Or maybe bishop f2, that is an interesting idea. So look, if we play bishop f2 here to start with. First of all, we control e3 square. So rook uh, can go to e3, which means uh, we can play e7 next move if there is no um, piece controlling e7. Uh, the idea that after bishop f2 and bishop takes f2, we can play e7, and then after rook e3, we can play a7. So bishop no longer controls a7 square, because rook on e3 will actually close the diagonal for the own bishop. Alright, that is an interesting thing. But what if after bishop f2, rook goes to h7, simply controlling the 7th rank? In this case, I think we just take on f6, uh, after taking on d4. And we should have a winning position. So bishop d4, let's say rook e7 leads to bishop f6. If not rook e7, then what? We have a threat of just playing a7. So maybe king to g8. We play a7. Alright. 
He has to take, we take, and we have a winning position. All right. And if after bishop f2 the bishop goes away somewhere, then where? If bishop e5, then e7. <clears throat> if uh, bishop to c3 or b2, I guess also just e7. Yeah, it looks good. Looks nice. So now this pawn first, and now this one. And promotes. Okay. So we have only two knights against the queen. Usually it is not enough to compensate this girl, but um, the king on e4 is kind of limited. And usually when you have knights, there are so many different forks possible. So maybe we have a fork or we have a chance to force the king under fork. So let's see. Uh, if king is somewhere on f4, there is a fork potentially on d5 or e6. e6 is also a nice square. Oh, look. I have an interesting idea just to play knight to f5 now. So the point is that after knight f5, I control e3 squares. Now I have a sort of playing f3. I mean, if after knight f5 he takes with the pawn, Let's start with this. I just play f3, and if king goes to f4 or e3, I have knight e5 fork. The problem, however, is that after knight f5, e takes f5, f3, king e3, knight e5 check, king takes e2, knight takes c7, and king takes f3. Mm, it could be a losing position for white. So it's not clear for which result we fight here. Okay, so knight f5 is kind of interesting idea let's see if we have something better what if we just take on e6 to start with so knight takes e6 in this case queen probably goes to d6 let's say and now our knight is pinned and i can't see a follow-up okay what else if we start with the knight if we simply start with the f3 check, is it something? King mm, simply goes to e3, I think. It's just bad for white. So knight f5 on the move number one really looks interesting. Knight to d3 should be also considered, but then we lose the control over d5 square. Okay, so knight d3. We just limit the king, of course, but d5 is no longer controlled. Okay, let's focus on knight f5. Knight f5, e takes f5, f3, king goes to e3, knight e5, takes e2, takes e7, takes f3, or maybe even d3 immediately. If d3 immediately, we play knight to d5, I guess. And if d2, we play knight c3, check, and, well, we make a draw. If he takes on f3, I think we do. King takes f5, d3, knight d5, d2, knight c3, and this is also a draw. Alright, after knight f5, uh, does black have something better than taking on f5? For example, queen somewhere, I don't know. Say to h2. What are we going to do in that case? If we play f3 there, king goes to e5. Knight to d3 is a checkmate. No, it's not a checkmate because king d5 is possible. Alright, knight f5, queen goes to h2, for instance. Knight g3 check. King goes to e5. Also not that clear. Right, maybe. Okay, still f3. So I'm talking about knight f5, queen h2, f3. But okay, what if just king e3 in this case? Oh, it's not possible, knight on f5 controls that. So the king has basically only e5 and f4 squares. Hmm. 
doesn't look interesting for white. Doesn't look very, very promising. Do you know? Do we have something better than knight f5 move? That's an interesting thing. So other moves that limit the king somehow and actually lead to some forks. If pawn e6 remains there, we just don't have a fork. But maybe I just underestimate other ideas, I don't know, maybe knight to h5 is a move, or maybe even knight to e8, the move I didn't consider, so knight e8 attacking the queen, with the idea of bringing the knight somewhere to f6 or maybe d6. So let's see, if knight goes to e8 attacking the queen, where the queen goes, d7 is not possible because of knight f6 fork, c6 is controlled, c5, what is going on after c5? We can play knight f6 check and then knight d3 fork decides. The same is about c1 square. Uh, what about c3? What about c3? It's probably the main line. Alright, what else? Queen b6. <coughs> Where is our fork? Or queen a5. Queen a5, knight f6 and knight c6 is possible at some point. So queen b6 is an interesting move after knight e8. Probably queen b8. But if queen b6, then knight f6, and if king e5, then knight e7. If queen b8 the same, queen b6 the same, queen a5, knight c6 is a fork. And finally c3. Knight f6. He goes to e5. What is our follow up there? Maybe knight e6 is better there. I don't know. So knight e8, queen c3, knight f6. If king goes to f4, then knight d3 decides because it is a checkmate. If king goes to d6, sorry, e5, then what? So knight e8, queen c3, knight f6, king e5. Now, if uh, black moves the king to d6, there is knight e4 fork, but how to force the king there? Uh, this is an interesting thing. So knight f6, king e5. Knight d3 check. Simple. Simple thing. And king d6 there. Yeah, I guess knight e8 wins. Wow, interesting. So knight f5 was just a wrong direction. Wrong direction. So check. And knight to d3. With a four. It just takes, I think. Yeah. Oh, this is very nice. Uh, I think I already saw this position many times. Uh, at very least, I saw the pattern many times, but well. Let's try to solve it. So we are down the rook, it's clear. And we have to do something to promote our pawn d7 somehow. The question is how. So, we can put our knight on d6. That is probably the first move, 100%. Because without this move, he just plays rook d8 and takes the pawn on d7. Uh, then we have a threat of playing knight to c8, right? So this will help us to uh, actually break the connection between the rook and the square d8. So to knight d6, if we place rook d8, we play knight f7 check, king goes to g7 or g8, uh, we take the rook, in which case uh, he plays king f8, let's say, but knight e6 check and d8 promotion. So he can't stop us from uh, the promotion, I guess, but yeah, now I understand. After knight e6, rook d8, knight f7, he has to go to g8. Uh, in this case, we take the rook and we don't have check next move, which happens if he plays king to g7. All right. And after that, he can play something like uh, knight to c7, in which case we play d5 most likely, or just knight c6, knight e6, d5. This way. 
Or if he plays knight to e7, we play knight to e6, knight to c6, and just d5. He should be winning. Or maybe not. Because he has king f7, d takes c6, king takes e6. No, he's not in time to perform this idea. Alright, this should be winning. Uh, if after knight to d6, he moves the knight. Let's say he plays knight to e7, that will be probably the main line. And if we play knight to c8, he plays knight to c6. So after knight e6 and knight e7, we should start with d5 move. Yeah, very complicated. But I think we have to play knight e6, so let's start with this. Yeah, knight c7. Now, if we play knight to c8, he plays uh, knight to e6 and stops the pawn. So our next move should be d5, 100%. It is the only way to prevent knight e6 and to stop this plan. So let's play d5, it is also clear. Now rook to f8, all right. So now most likely we have to do the same trick and play knight to e8. Now from this side, uh, creating a sort of d8 queen. But he will take with the rook. In which case we play d6. And it is like in Ortoeta Sans, that pattern, I guess. So our pawns simply beat all this brigade. Right or not? Yeah, I guess. But it's not over. Well, it's over, in fact. Only one point for such a great sequence. All right. Never mind. Now, what do we have? Here, so opponent has two very dangerous passed pawns. The one is going to a1, another one to f1. But we also have quite interesting setup there on the king side. So two connected passed pawns supported by the king and potentially by the bishop as well. So what can we do? Something like bishop e5 can be considered here just loading the gun, uh, trying to exploit the battery. So bishop e5 stopping this pawn, and if f1 queen, then king goes to e7, check, king g8, just h7, checkmate. So after bishop e5, uh, if bishop g6, king g6, king g8, h7, h8, wins. If king g8 first, then we play what? We play h7, king goes to h8, and again we win. I guess, yeah, that, that is the move. All right. <laughs> that was a correct move, but after bishop takes a1, there is f1 queen, right? So maybe here, king f7 is a correct reply. Queen takes e5, g7, king h7, g8, queen, king takes h6, g5, queen g5, queen h8, bishop h7, queen f8 with the checkmate, yeah. That is a move. Oh, nice checkmate, by the way. Queen. G5, just grabbing G5 square. Now, Queen H8, forcing Bishop H7, and now Queen here. Very nice mechanism. Okay, nice. So, what do we have here? Bishop B3, Queen B3, Rook E8, King F7. Knight e6 check, king g6, forced, then h5 check, follow up, king g5 f4 check, king h6 knight f5 checkmate, or king h6 knight f5 and f4 checkmate, I think it wins. But after, yeah, if bishop b3 and knight e5 would just take a knight e7 fork. Let's do it. This is kind of nice, but quite simple because it is just forced. Checkmate. Bye bye. Oh, that is nice. I love the pattern when I have two minor pieces against the queen. Usually leads to some interesting uh, Tsukchwangs, dominations, and so on. So, right now, what do we have here? 
My first intention was to play something like King d4, intending to play c5, and King d4 works if... No, it doesn't work because of cd5 and we no longer control e7 square. What I had in mind something like c5 check then and so forth. It's completely wrong, of course. Alright, so let's start with uh, tempo moves. Like c5 check. Does it work or not? So c5, if king goes to e6 or d7, we have bishop f5. King f5, 97, fork takes c8, or just bishop takes the queen if the king goes to d7. So after c5, he has to take, most likely, in which case we do what? What is our follow-up there? Do we have a follow-up there? There should be a possibility to regroup the pieces somehow. So maybe knight e7 attacking the queen after that. The queen goes to d7. Okay, it's unclear. It's unclear. So what else? c5, king c5, d4, king goes back to d6. I can't see what did we achieve. So c5, king c5, knight e7, queen to d file. Queen can actually go almost anywhere after that. Oh, we have an interesting idea of just putting the knight on f5, creating sort of a d4. Alright. Yeah, that will be nice. So c5, king takes c5, knight goes to e7, attacking the queen. And then if queen somewhere, we just play knight f5. Controlling d6 square and since we control all other squares, we have a sort of just d4 with a checkmate And knight on f5 is actually supporting this d4. So if queen goes to d5, it doesn't help. So knight f5 followed by just d4 So queen probably after knight e7 has to go to h8 But it also doesn't help. So just knight f5 g6 check, but d4 still still here. Okay Let's do it. I think It is winning all right Right. Aha! <laughs> that is the defense. Underestimated, but I think we are very close, so there should be a tuk swung. Maybe something like bishop g2, queen g2, d4 check, king d5, knight e3 should work. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Very nice. Yep. Another great pattern. So queen and the bishop against the queen and a lot of pawns. Uh, but if we coordinate our pieces correctly, it's possible to come up with some uh, checkmate in that. Or maybe with scenarios of winning the queen on b4 because it is far away and can be skewered potentially. All right. What do we have here? Uh, just a bunch of very natural moves like queen f5, queen f7, queen h7 and then supporting this queen with the bishop. I guess the first move that should be considered here is uh, definitely uh, queen takes f5. So queen takes f5 and where the king goes? So probably to h6. Queen to h7 is uh, also very nice because in this case we actually uh, prevent king h6. And what does this mean? Mm, if king goes to g5, we have bishop d8, just to follow up. But what if king goes to g4? That's the question. Yeah, if queen h7, then king goes to g4, which is potentially not very pleasant. All right. So we need a check that actually combines several ideas. So we need a follow up with the bishop. At the same time, we have to prevent the situation in which the king simply runs away. So 
let's check <clears throat> again. Queen takes f5. So if uh, king goes to h4, we at least have this bishop d8. Then king goes to g3. It is forced. We have queen takes f2. If king h3, then queen g2 checkmate. If king g4, then queen h4. And we take the queen. So to queen f5, at least king h4 loses. But uh, what if king goes to h6? What if king goes to h6? Um, let's say queen f6. But king goes to h7. I can't see a follow-up there. So we can check with queen, but it's really hard to achieve anything. So let's come back to queen h7. King goes to g4. Uh, looks like the only move, because if king goes to g5, then we play bishop d8, check, forcing the king to the fourth rank, and then we have this queen h4, uh, winning the queen. So queen h7, king goes to g4. Now we have queen to g6, actually, as a follow-up. So now, if king h4, then bishop d8 and queen g2. If uh, king to f4, then bishop d6 check and takes the queen. If king goes to f3, we have queen g2. If king f4, bishop d6 and skewer. If king e3, then bishop b6 is interesting. All right, so this looks like an interesting line. I guess queen h7 is the correct solution. Yeah, let's go queen h7 and see, because I do believe that is the correct way. The only thing here to check from g6, yeah, I guess to check from g6. And now, we can include queen f5, but then queen f4, I guess we lose the advantage. So queen g2 should be played. Now, if king f4, then bishop d6 wins, but king e3, that is the question. In that case, bishop b6 looks very good, but then king goes to, say, d3 or d2. So maybe queen g2, king e3, and what? Queen f2. But then king e4. Hmm. Interesting thing. So, queen g2, king e3, bishop b6, check. King goes to d3, queen takes d5, queen c2. No, it's already the wrong way because uh, we also have to uh, actually use our king otherwise it will be very hard i guess so queen g2 king e3 what didn't we consider something like queen g3 or h3 here let's say queen g3 but king goes to e4 simply and if check from the fourth rank then f4 oh we have queen h5 now that is an interesting check. So queen h5, king goes to e3 and queen e2. But then king goes to d4, so what? All right, let's come back to queen f5. So queen takes f5. goodness that is overwhelming <laughs> these exercises are usually very very instructive and useful but at the same time they are just stressing so queen f5 queen f4 queen two say h3 or maybe d3 king g4 no it doesn't look correct Oh, fantastic, I don't see. I don't see this. Of course, uh, we obviously have to make check, otherwise there is queen to e1. All right, queen g2. If king e3, queen f2. If king e4, just queen e2 check. King f4, bishop d6. King d4, bishop b6. And if king c3, bishop a5. Yeah, that is the... That is the line, all right? And it's forced. Yeah, great. Just check. Now, bishop b6 and bishop a5. 
Yes. Queenie won wins. The queen and the guy mans. 